Go ahead. Second. One sec. There we go. Okay, it's recording now. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, GL 30, C30A section 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via uh, remote participation. Um, it's all the meetings also being recorded. Uh, we're going to do a roll call here to make sure that everyone's video and audio is working properly. Um, and, um, and I'll do that right now. Uh, Tim Neal. Uh, present. Okay. Susan Dirks. Yes. Jack Wollensack. I'm here. Rosemary Koffler. Yes. Yvette Palacing. Jacqueline Smith Crooks. I'm here. I will have to leave early, but I am here. All right. And Greg Bascom. Here. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Just be just be sure to get uh, get used to the unmuting, muting, and unmuting. Um, be sure when you uh, wish to speak that you are unmuted. <clears throat> so uh, we'll we'll. If you see me uh, holding my ear, uh, that means I can't hear you. So that'll, that's a little bit of a backup. Uh, a backup. So I call this meeting to order. And um, anyone, um, we, uh, first of all, I want, want to say a welcome to any guests that we have here. Uh, are there any guests? According to the participant panel and the attendees, there are no attendees at this time. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll monitor that. Uh, All right. Okay. Not. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So therefore, anyone in the public, uh, if we get members of the public who do wish to speak, I will let them know that they are free to express their views. Um, also, um, there's uh, presumably there's is there anyone dialing in by phone today? I don't think so. Um, and um, I always encourage everyone to mute um, because it cuts down on any background noise that you have um, in your um, um, you know in your uh, space. Um, and you can always unmute when, when uh, you've been identified um, by the chair. Um, um, when you want to speak, you can also, you can raise your hand either electronically by, by um, um, hitting the uh, raise hand um, uh, icon on your screen, um, or you can physically raise your hand, uh, your, your real hand. <laughs> um, Okay, um, all right, so um, everyone should have the agenda and its attachments. And um, so let's see, let me just, uh, we wanna get started by um, going next to the, um, the um, uh, remembering um, Etta Walsh, uh, so item, um, so, um, who is that? Uh, Etta, as you, as many of you know, was, um, uh, died on July 28th, and um, she was a, 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 a former president of the Friends of the Amherst Senior Center, and many of you have know her very well. Um, uh, we'll also be honoring, honoring and, and uh, recalling uh, Fred Filios, who died on August 7th at the age of 102. Um, mm. And I wondered if anyone would like to say a few words about either Etta or Fred. Yeah, um, I just would like to add uh, for the record and posterity that Fred Filios was honored with the Boston Post Kane Award. And I know several members on the Council on Aging 
were okay. present at his presentation. Uh, Nancy Bagano uh, feeded him gloriously. There was a wonderful birthday party, I understand. I think Sue was there. Um, Rosemary was quite familiar with him and he was a treasure in the community. His obituary spoke so eloquently to a life that was so well lived. So I just wanna explain for people who might be watching this at a later time, why we're honoring uh, Fred Filios, because he was a recipient of the Boston Post Cane, which is an award which honors our oldest uh, member of our community. And so with his passing, we'll be working with the town clerk's mm -hmm. office to identify the next recipient of that award. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a time-honored tradition, and Nancy uh, had done a beautiful job of honoring him and feeding him. So I just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that for, for the record. And then with regard to Edda, there, um, I think that words really defy the, the epic loss that she is to our senior center and to the community. She was mm -hmm. also a member of the Council on Aging and she worked so tirelessly, though I knew her such a small period of time. The two things that stood out to me was uh, we were doing the, um, the, the um, I think we called the white elephant sale. Uh, last October on the common, it was pouring rain and she was out there trudging, you know, uh, items across the common from cars back and forth. It was a cold, rainy, raw day. We were drinking hot chocolate and, and just so exceptionally devoted. I, I just stood um, in awe of everybody who showed up, but particularly her because at that time she was ill and uh, you know, going through treatment and still so very present and determined, um, even if it was $10 to $20 or whatever she could manage to um, support the senior center, she did. So I just, I honor her. And the love that she had with her husband was just uh, remarkable. To watch them at events together, I think they had just a beautiful relationship of connection, so. Yes, and I, I did wanna also say a few words. I certainly uh, agree totally with Mary Beth that Edda was just a, a wonderful presence. And um, I'm totally uncomplaining at every, all along the way throughout her illness. She was um, happy to do things and help others and be a part of the friends. So we will miss her a lot. She was a very wonderful presence. Oops, I'm sorry about this one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the um, other thing I wanted to say about Fred, he was the sweetest little guy. He would come to the senior center and he would sit on the sofa there day after day. And the first time I saw him, I said, Fred, uh, I, I didn't know his name. I said, um, is there something I can help you with while he was sitting there? And he said, oh, no, I, I just like to be here. And so he would come every day and he didn't, he was always kind of um, humorous and jovial and he would talk with people and that was his place. But he was also remarkable. He had, was so talented. He had numerous um, careers throughout his life mm -hmm. from um, social, so, soil scientists to in creating his own business and doing perk tests and um, w wetland um, mapping. Mm -hmm. but, and he had a huge family. I was at his birthday party and so was Sue. And um, his children, um, with their extended families. It was a wonderful gathering. Very nice people. And I think that was one of the happiest days of his life. He was so proud with that um, Boston Post Came Award. It was just a joy to be there. So many, many memories, wonderful people that we will always think about. Thank you so much, both Mary Beth and Rosemary. Anyone else care to share? Let's it, take, go ahead, um, Sue. Uh, Fred, Fred was my neighbor for a number of years. He lived in the same building and, and he was just a delight as a neighbor as well. But uh, I do remember him many times coming into the senior center and <clears throat> he just sort of lit up the room and people loved to visit with him. And certainly that birthday party was amazing. 
And Etta, she she just astounded me with her energy, her passion, her uh, her sense of humor was so wonderful. And and the, during the the early spring and summer, uh, I had the privilege of having a visit with her and, and Dennis twice, uh, social distancing with our masks, and. <clears throat> She, even in her pain, she, she exuded a joy of life, mm. and I sure miss her. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much um, for that. Anyone else? Okay, let's just take a few moments of silence in honor of these glorious human beings and the lives they live. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, moving on um, on our agenda um, to presentations and discussions. Um, the statement from the chair. Um, so um, I'd like to begin by expressing a big debt of gratitude um, for the work of my predecessor as council, council chair, uh, Rosemary Koffler. Um, her, her intelligence and, and compassion and integrity and organizing skills has really set a standard, a very high standard. And um, she has been so generous with her time and our transition has, uh, um, has been um, delightful and filled with humor, and uh, um, we uh, we have collaborated wonderfully. And uh, so, thank goodness she's agreed to uh, uh, contribute to the continuity um, and continue as a council member and bring uh, her deep knowledge of our town and and ACOA's uh, history. Uh, uh, to our future work together. So I, I know that you share with me uh, the excitement about that. And I also wanted to thank uh, this morning, a uh, new council member, uh, Greg Bascom, who uh, for, for suggesting that we meet in August. Um, um, I understand that in the past, uh, ACOA meetings have rarely taken place in this month. And um, because these times are unusual, he suggested it and I think it was a very wise decision. And so I think thank, thanks to Greg for, um, for urging us to, uh, to make the, the, the right decision on that. Um, I'd like to share my impressions of where the Amherst Council on Aging is at this moment in our um, 53 year old history and offer some thoughts about where we might go as, where, as well as some core values that would animate our work. This strange and unprecedented time in our history which requires us to be physically separate, separate from each other, um, also opens up some extraordinary opportunities to examine all we do and how we do it. Um, in my view, everything is on the table and I think we would be fools if we simply carried on business as usual. Th this is a time for questions who is at the table and who is missing? What habits of culture and language exclude rather than invite? Where do barriers exist for folks and how do we overcome them? Do the rules, laws, and structures we use uh, serve our needs and fit our purposes? And for me, the most important one, and I'll be bold and, uh, and, and vulnerable when I state this, 
how can we create and sustain among elders in our town a practice of beloved community that is authentic and dynamic? In my view, we do not have to be imprisoned by the limitations imposed uh, on us by this small virus because there is ennobling work to be done. Um, and there are people who call to us uh, to do this work. First of all, who calls us? Seniors, seniors themselves. Um, and um, especially those who are uh, particularly vulnerable. Um, and they call to us, especially um, if we create occasions for listening, and then we become world-class listeners. But others call to us as well, their families and their caregivers, and our youth and our planet calls to us. Black Lives Matter calls to us, and even our dusty holy books or our rusty moral compasses. They beseech us to act, to witness, to create, and then sustain beloved community. I have been so fortunate to have had conversations with every one of you, nearly every one of you. And Tim, we're meeting soon. <laughs> and I, I have glimpsed your experience and your dreams and your wisdom and your heart. And that is what we bring to this moment in our little town. This moment that is both bold and humbling and even a bit scary. The renowned cellist Yo-Yo Ma has said, everyone is a little bit scary when they're going somewhere they haven't been before. But if you trust the process, we can sometimes turn that fear into joy. We do have to pay attention to the process. And we must make the process serve our needs. I'm going to ask you in the, in the year ahead that we accompany each other to some places we've never been, but we can do this. We have a chance to face and dismantle not only structures of institutional racism that have perpetuated unspeakable misery in our town and in our nation, but in doing so, awaken ourselves to all the structures in our culture that diminish our humanity, inequality, greed, and materialism. Those very structures conspire to harm or even kill elders or discard them as a drag upon our economy or the unproductive ones, to label them as the unproductive ones. In the last years of our lives, we cannot allow that to happen. So we must strengthen our advocacy muscles. The Emmer Senior Center, we know, is but one gathering of elders in our town. And it has already achieved some amazing victories in providing much needed services to vulnerable people. Regardless of social class or education, seniors can meet together to exercise or play cribbage or discuss public policy, learn about Shakespeare or get their blood pressures taken. That is a good beginning, but it is not nearly enough. A clear-eyed look at the Senior Center at Bangs will, review that, will reveal that the vast majority 
of those who participate in programs at the center are disproportionately white folks. Until now, this council has rarely represented seniors of color or senior gay people or seniors for whom um, English is the second language. And that is about to change. Permit me, if you would, for a word to white folks on the council. I'm white. Uh, and I say, we have some major homework to do. For me, a good starting place was Robin D'Angelo's book, which I've mentioned before, called White Fragility. I'm also reading this book um, by um, Ibram Kendi called How to Be an Anti-Racist. Although I have been involved in civil rights work my entire life, this book has opened up whole new vistas and depths of better understanding. I use this book as kind of a thoughtful and soulful tool for performing my own fearless and searching moral inventory. He's also delightfully and powerfully produced this children's book. It's a board book and it's called Anti-Racist Baby. And it is filled with light and hope if you can get your hands on it, it keeps selling out. Both of these books have been best sellers recognized by, uh, 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 by the New York Times. I'm challenging us to begin to imagine what beloved community would look like among the seniors in this town. In fact, what beloved community is in the entire town. And then, but specifically, our task is to, uh, the, in, in a little part of the universe is regarding seniors and advocating for them. And as we do that, we get our shovels out and start digging the foundation for building right relationships that characterize that aspiration. Between now and the next meeting, I want everyone, I would like everyone to think about what values and practices need to be embedded in our process that will support our work ahead. One more thing. Uh, while I have agreed to accept the role of chair, this is definitely not the Pat Rector show. Our strength is our collective power. Where uh, I'm asking you to take leadership and scoop up others and bring them along with you. Democratize your, activ your activities and make thoughtful use of your talents, which I know are tremendous, and your network of friends and neighbors and expand beyond it. I can't wait for us to begin our work together, and I know it's going to be a very exhilarating year. Okay, so um, I want to uh, now recognize that and am happy to say that um, Yvette has joined us. Hello, Yvette. And you may want to, I'm not hearing you, but you may want to turn on. I'm hope, hopefully you're hearing us and you may need to unmute yourself. So, okay, we're gonna move on to the director's update with Mary Beth. I know we always have to, I always have to remember to unmute. So yeah. thank you, Pat, and thank you for that inspiring statement. Uh, I look forward to working with the Council on Aging and making all of that um, real and present. Um, so you've set an agenda and an aspiration, and I hope that together we can all partner to really widen the circle here. So I'm very excited. So my report is really three points that I just would like to share with you all in terms of updates from the last time that we met. Operationally, um, we have successfully garnered three part-time employees uh, pursuant to a grant for unemployed restaurant workers. So they are actually um, underway. So we have, um, it was a program through Mass Hire and then the um, accompanying partner 
for the grant is SnapChef. So it was intended to recruit unemployed or underemployed restaurant workers who have lost their positions. And we have uh, one person who's helping us with meal preparation in terms of packing the food every day. And we have two new uh, delivery drivers for our Meals on Wheels program. So it's fantastic. The program pays their salaries and wages, and we are the site recipient for the benefit of their work. And we are, um, it's just, it's tremendously helpful for our staff, um, and particularly this time since food and uh, the number of meals we provide has expanded um, quite a bit. Um, secondly, with regard to operations, I wanted to give you an update on our technology loan program. So I think the last time that I spoke with you, I indicated I was pursuing grants and opportunities to um, purchase technology that we could loan to seniors um, because of the fact that it looks like this pandemic will certainly go on for a longer period of time. And that digital divide for seniors is real. Um, I've gotten calls for people who can't access telehealth uh, appointments and trying to help them uh, through that process of either contacting medical providers or trying to find someone in the community who could help them. So there, you know, it, it is a health care issue as well as one that will help to reduce isolation and depression. So we did get a grant and so we are purchasing nine um, tablets, so also known as Chromebooks, but I like to call it a tablet because I think it's a friendlier word. And then I have started a fundraiser. So I will share uh, with the community. It's in, it's in the newsletter and it is on our Facebook page. But I have a GoFundMe campaign. I am running 200 miles uh, from here to Provincetown and asking people to pledge and support us. So, um, and the title of it is Move and Groove to Close the Senior Digital Divide. And uh, it, the, the intention is twofold, is one, to have a fundraiser to purchase an additional um, pieces of equipment for our community. And so the goal is $10,000. And I have about close to $600 so far. Thank you, Pat Rector and Rosemary, <laughs> who became aware of the campaign. And um, the, other, the other piece to it, and I think more importantly, is to invite the entire senior community to also move along with us. So what we know from this period of sheltering in place is that a lot of people um, had a loss of mobility, also a loss of muscle mass. We also so know that movement improves mood and improves cognitive functioning. So um, people who can follow us on our Facebook page, we're going to be posting different ways that people move. So if any of you have photos or videos of any way in which you move. So um, I've begun to create a little library. I have myself using soup cans, doing um, bicep curls. Uh, how to unload the dishwasher, right? And in a way that we're, so we're reaching, we're bending carefully, we're stretching, um, rolling our shoulders in between that. So finding the, the kind of movement does not have to be something extreme. I am doing the run just because that way I can garner friends support and financial support. But um, again, I want to engage the community to move because as we're looking at winter, we really need to begin to buffet ourselves and to find ways to support movement, mobility, and also to help us with improving mood, depression, and anxiety. So the way that we're going to also be doing this is through communication. So we've been looking at closely communication plans and obviously, so that's my third point, is how are we communicating and what are the ways that we can update that? Um, and and here's, here's a small example. So the newsletter has been with the printer for over four weeks. They have had a problem with their copiers. And so it is sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. As of two days ago when I communicated with them, they again apologized. Um, they're having some problems with their machines and they're in the middle of a move. And so that, that form of copying that manual uh, paper newsletter, while it is essential for a certain slice of our population, I think we need to begin to sort of shepherd people and encourage them to subscribe to an e-newsletter. 
So I have been working with the communications manager for our uh, town, and we are going to be adding on our website a subscribe button for an e-newsletter. We've also been um, testing MailChimp for, we have um, some people's emails through my senior center, but honestly, um, the, uh, the number of people who also provide a, an email is, is actually kind of quite small. So that's why we're requesting, we're gonna be doing a, a subscribe button. So you will see a slow process of migration of trying to communicate with people in a way that is more timely because what we do know certainly, um, even with the advisories for the pandemic, things shifted so quickly as we learned more information. Likewise, as we are accommodating these new ways of communicating, things um, that we're able to produce are, are cropping up, not at a period of every two months of, of getting people to schedule a class. Um, so each week I might come up with another person who says, geez, I'd like to try to teach, but I wanna do it with a small group. And so we, do, we need to be able to spontaneously communicate with our um, our seniors. Um, and, and certainly, again, we acknowledge that not everybody's going to have that capacity, but really spreading the word and messaging to follow us on Facebook, to go onto the website. And we are um, updating the website. As part of that, your only task I'm going to ask of you is um, I will have someone be getting in touch with you to take a photo for um, your display um, for the Council on Aging. So individual shots, we won't get you all together. Um, but um, as part of the update of the website, I really wanna make it more visually friendly and having photos of you and us and what we do, I think it's more inviting. Um, and so that will be your assignment with that regard. So hopefully, um, again, in the next several months, you'll see a shift but it, it really is necessary so that people know what we're doing and how we're doing it because um, the every two months is just, it's a challenge in this time. So, and I think that that's it. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Mary Beth? Well, I do. I wanna say thank you. I, yeah. uh, this running. <laughs> Uh, jumping, uh, moving, um, uh, mm -hmm. director is really uh, exciting to me, and uh, um, and I and I I guess my hope is that we figure out, uh, and maybe we need to brainstorm about this, but we figure out a way. Uh, this needs to be. This is a a love a lovely thing, um, and needs to be promoted more with a press release perhaps. And I don't know what our history of, of, of press work has happened, um, um, but um, I'm sure that there are others who do. So Sue, do you wanna weigh in a little bit about this or Rosemary? Yes, um, usually Scott Mersbrock is at our meetings. Mm -hmm. But I guess since Zoom, maybe he reads the uh, transcript after, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, he does need to be nudged. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think to nudge him about this Mary Beth would be very helpful. It might wake some seniors up to realize that they already know how to do quite a bit of telecommunication and to get on board a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I agree with you. Two months is, is too much of a space, especially given these times. I mean, things are changing every day. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't have to sit back in a rocking chair and be left out. <laughs> yeah. and, Scott, oh. Go ahead. Jacqueline? Yeah. No, I, I, I ditto what, what has been said. I think there's a lot of energy um exuding and i think that energy opens well it paves the way for opening um this council to uh, people who never thought they could or would be a part mm -hmm. that's great um i i think it oh okay sue do you want to add something Anybody else? 
Okay, uh, you know, it's a little hard uh, and slightly self-promotional <laughs> for Mary Beth to, uh, you know, uh, promote her own activity in some ways. So I'm not above, uh, I am not above uh, nudging Scott um, on this because I think this is, I think it's newsworthy and, um, and I think uh, more people need to know about it. And I, um, so, uh, yeah, I think we could do a bit some brainstorming um, about, uh, I would, let me put it this way. Um, we could identify a list of people, um, particularly through at the university and, and elsewhere who need to be notified of this activity in some way, just be on the newspaper, a little more active nudge, because I think we can raise $10,000 and imagine how that would help the digital divide here in our own community. Um, I think it would make a difference. And, you know, it, um, so, um, so, um, to be continued, we, and I will, I, I will yes. say, yes, so, so I am, we're creating flyers and some posters to put up around town and put them in some of the businesses. Oh, great. Um, and it's, you know, it's again, moving and grooving because I also want, you know, not everybody can necessarily contribute or, or maybe moved in that direction, given what's happening with the pandemic and how people are affected, but everybody can participate and move a little bit. And I have to say that even if I go around, if I go over to the Clark house, like on a Thursday afternoon and, and the ladies are sitting outside, I bring my phone, if we play a little music and we even just do like a little bit of dancing, how that shifts mood. I have to say that the science behind movement and mood is profound. And, and that's a piece that I really wanna to begin to shore people up as we head into fall leading into winter where people are not going to be able to go out as much. And so we need to build in a regular schedule and routine and movement and, and participation with one another with what we're able to offer. So, so that's a really important piece of this as well. So I'm happy to, to have an offline conversation about how we can more widely promote it. I've spoken with the town, they're very supportive. Um, but I just, I wanted to kind of have a soft entry with it because I wasn't quite sure how, like how all the technology would go with the GoFundMe or whatnot. But if you just Google GoFundMe, moving and groove, move and groove to close the digital divide. And it's on the Facebook page. And uh, I here we go. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say that part of why I am incognito at these meetings is because I'm moving and grooving. You oh. know, it's an hour where I could just move, even sway. And second, I wanted to say about Scott and the Amherst Bulletin and all the great stuff you're doing, I wondered whether you could do a press release like UMass does. We, when, when something as big is happening, they do a press release and you could send that maybe to the local papers, Valley Advocate, Bulletin, Daily Hampshire Gazette. Um, yeah. And then it would invite maybe their, um, it would uh, stir their curiosity and their responsibility to communicate, you know, what you're doing, what we're doing, because um, that's what they do. <laughs> and that's all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks, Eva. And I will tell you, I have reached out to Scott, um, but I never uh, received a response. And mm -hmm. I know that, that they're also in some transition over there and some, some reduced staffing. Um, but it is not to say that we can't keep pushing and nudging in that way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank you. We'll, we'll think of the angles. We'll keep finding angles. I, I really appreciate this nudge and support around that. Thanks. Uh, Rosemary. I think Tim had his hand up first. So okay, please. Tim. Oh, okay. That's fine, okay. Uh, no, I was just going to, and uh, you'll be hearing, uh, I'm sure, more about this uh, but uh, many of the comments that Rose, uh, that Mary Beth just made, I think are pertinent to our future fundraising for the uh, organization as well. Mm -hmm. uh, data, knowing who supports the senior center, either consistently, et cetera, et cetera, I think is very, very important. Uh, so I think we just need to all be cognizant of that, how we capture who uh, supports and, uh, uh, participates in in the organization and the themes and the major themes what the targeted uh, fundraising is is very very important particularly for larger dollars 
And uh, when I get back, we're going to be talking more about that, about how we can proceed in those veins. But just all of us need to keep that in mind as to how we might capture our friends and those who should be our friends uh, and go from there. I definitely um, want to, uh, I'm going to uh, task my husband with making a picture of photographing me moving. I have a kind of a ballet move that I do when I empty the dishwasher. Um, and it's really a sight to, for sore eyes, I'm quite sure. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I think so. Think about uh, how you move and groove and uh, figure out something, uh, if you like, um, that, um, that you might uh, want to add to this effort. Um, and so, um, so thanks for um, all of that. And uh, um, I think, uh, I, I, I guess I would like to do is, um, I would like to dra draft a press release around this. Uh, so Mary Beth and I can get together about the facts and the details. Um, about it and we'll put something together and, and send it off. Um, if there, um, I don't, I, are there any objections to that at all? Okay, uh, hearing none, <laughs> we, we go forward. Okay, so um, item C is a, um, we have a vacancy, ACOA vacancy on the council. And um, I have, um, so, and I have listed on your, uh, 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 Jacqueline and Yvette's um, names because uh, we have had some intense conversations uh, about this and some some brainstorming actually. Um, so do either of you want to take uh, just share a little bit about um, uh, what um, what sort of outreach you've been uh, doing and and then uh, yeah so Jacqueline, did you want to say a few words about that? Well, I've been talking with some individuals, and uh, what what occurred to me as well, uh, one of the individuals um, that I spoke to indicated that her the plate was full, but she is all one, one of the items on her plate is that a communications person for the African Methodist Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. and that. Um, the, the announcement or uh, whatever some of the, the activities are can be shared uh, with that with that audience, that group of people. That's um, excellent. Yeah. So and I can I continue to engage even informally, uh, sort of slide it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So is that a church bulletin? Um, a kind of like a Electronic, yes, yes, okay, yes, and she is really very good about getting the word out and back and forth between uh, the congregants or people on the email list, uh, the pastor, and uh, some people in the community. How can we support you in that, um, Jacqueline? Um, right now, I'm I'm just working it out with her the particulars mm -hmm. okay because she has a number of things on her plate sure and we'll see where things go okay so thanks for asking sure and yvette i know you've been uh doing a little poking around and <laughs> can you yes. say some of what you've been doing it's very exciting also <laughs> okay um so in speaking with you uh we agreed that I would reach out to perhaps the uh, Human Rights Commission as a way to determine if they have a contact list of how they reach out to the community. What groups do they work with? I looked at their website and I didn't see any Latino, for example, you know, I'm Latina. So I did not see any Latino, Latina representation um, which is good, I guess. It, maybe it suggests that things are going well with that community. Um, and so uh, a, lot, a, a few uh, individuals' term just ended in June 2020. And of course, we are in the middle of the pandemic and that changed everything. 
So Jennifer at the Human Rights Commission was so kind to return my call, my email. We spoke and um, she thought that a contact might be Marta Guevara, who was a principal in the Amherst Regional uh, High School. Mm -hmm. And she has a center where they work with families of color so that you know, their voice is heard, that there's a safe place. And so all I asked about that only to determine how do we reach out to these uh, individuals, these communities, and uh, is there a, a, a system in place already? Mm -hmm. So I also spoke with uh, Juana uh, Trujillo, and uh, she uh, emphasized that she thought the list already existed at the senior center. Uh, she noted that that same newsletter uh, contact uh, address um, would, uh, would help us reach out, identify Latino, Hispanic names, and reach out to those communities. We might even have, you know, uh, nationality or however, you know, I don't know if that's a question that's asked or we care. Maybe we care more now, you know? So, uh, so we were talking about how to reach out to communities so that they could get involved and determine what types of programming are of interest to them that they would like to lead or see, attend. You had great ideas as well, Pat. I really appreciate that. You even suggested things like talks that people might want to attend um, or facilitate. And, when, and I, as I said, when I mentioned that to Juana, I thought it kind of opened up, you know, her imagination that um, it would be, uh, it could be very interesting and uh, healthy food for people, uh, all of us together as a community to share uh, culture, and, you know, so it could be food, it could be a party, but it could be something um, cultural, historical that we all share together. So thank you, Pat. So where I am with that, I left it at the, um, I did not reach out to Marta Guevara. Uh, so I'm just waiting to see where your Council on Aging wants to go with that. Thank you. Thanks, Yvette. That's, that's terrific. And I, I would also sort of want to, I, I also want to underscore um, what Mary Beth and I have been discussing a bit is that, um, that we, we are, we have reason to be humble about this notion about uh, effective uh, outreach and also risk and, the, and there's much need for respecting uh, the integrity of gatherings of, of seniors in other parts of the community who never, who, who never encounter, who ne might not ever come to the senior center, but are, are very much uh, concerned about um, uh, the welfare, uh, their own welfare and their own well-being. So, um, I want to, and I just, I want to just add that um, the absence of um, a Latino presence on the Human Rights Council doesn't necessarily mean that everything is just fine for Latinos in this town. I can assure you that it is not, <laughs> just because of friend, friendships that I have. Um, and so, um, but sometimes I think in uh, um, uh, uh, developing a critical mass uh, numerically does make a difference. And um, so I think we, we need to just be alert to opportunities for bridge building and connection, and we will learn from those and we will get better. Um, and uh, so, um, um, you know, uh, I'm also interested too, by the way, in, um, on, uh, so, so bottom line is this, that we have a vacancy um, and uh, if you have some suggestions of people that you know who would be uh, excellent uh, um, 
you know, I think what we're looking for is uh, thoughtful activists uh, who are willing to roll up their sleeves and help us think and act together uh, in the year ahead. And um, so um, do let Mary Beth know or myself know uh, or Tim know. Um, and, um, and Tim raises his hand. Uh, I just had a technical question. Uh, there are eight of us zoomed in right now and then with Mary Beth. How many uh, members uh, should be or are part of the committee? Are, legally, is that the wrong term, but how many members? Are one vague? Does that mean we need nine? We do or, need nine. We should have okay. nine. Yes. We can't. Have, I didn't look at our bylaws or whatnot. We don't have uh, an opportunity to have more than nine, right? Just it's nine is the total. So we well, have not more. at present, uh, not What's at that? present. And you, you mentioned um, the bylaws is uh, uh, another sort of can of worms. One of the things yeah, I that understand. forced but myself to do is nine is currently the number we're looking at. We have one vacancy. Is that what you're we saying? We have one vacancy. That's correct. That's right. Okay. So I want to share this problem with everyone, um, it, or uh, let's call it a share it, this challenge with others. We, we're looking for, we are looking for thoughtful leadership, and you may, in your own networks of people, uh, you may have some thoughts about who, who might be uh, involved. I do want to say that when I move, when, when we were uh, pre-COVID, um, that, um, you know, uh, I would like to see a little more involvement of men in the center. Um, it's it's, uh, it's a, in programming um, uh, and in, in various activity. I think that there is some lopsidedness there, uh, but that's something that um, you know we can um, you know we we just need to be alert uh, to um, gathering facts about that. So, um, and, and sorry, one, one other comment, and that is as we speak with people, some people may not feel they want to commit to being a formal member of the committee. We may think about forming an advisory group. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we might have, I don't know, uh, five or six or a bunch of people who are advisors to the advisory to the committee <laughs> to make them a little bit more formal because that engages them. So it's exactly. on the plate to think about. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think that that's a tremendous a thought. Um, and I guess one principle of organizing that I've learned over the years is, um, and I don't always follow it, but I, I try my darndest to, and then is, is never do anything alone. We don't do anything alone anyway, really, but bringing people with you when we have meetings and, you know, uh, it's always good to have two two or more people. And that is that, uh, as uh, Tim has mentioned, it's a way of engaging others. So we are doing the people's work here. <laughs> and then when we can bring others along, uh, formally or informally, I think that's a great idea. So we'll think about, we'll, we'll think about systematically about how to put meat on those bones uh, uh, in the months ahead. Uh, but um, I uh, totally agree with you on that. There's another vacancy we need to discuss right now. And um, um, I'm wondering, I guess first I'm wondering uh, if, um, if Norma is on the phone or connected with us in any way. I'm not seeing her on our list. Can you tell? Yes, Pat, Pat um, she is not on the list. Um, she would appear under the column called attendee. Yeah, yeah, panelist. okay. She's not. I did forward her the email and, uh, you know. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, I, I think we still need to proceed with this, uh, this item. Um, one of the things I need to share with you is that we, we, um, Mary Beth received a letter, um, which she shared with me, is that um, our, and uh, I'll ask Mary Beth to chime in, but I, I will say that our funding um, is um, uh, a major source of our of our funding for staff. Is uh, is that correct? It goes through the uh, Highland Valley Elder Services. Am I right about that? I, 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 okay. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, we have a um, 
let's say, a governmental uh, responsibility uh, to partner with Highland Valley um, Elder Services, which is the overarching um, um, agency for uh, councils on aging and senior, senior centers throughout Western Massachusetts. And um, in the past, uh, Norma Halleck has uh, served as our um, representative um, and she has served well and on the nutrition commi committee. Um, but the um, Amherst, but she does not live in Amherst and uh, we've been told that we need to identify someone uh, to serve on that uh, as our representative uh, on the hives um, on the hives board, uh, which meets, I believe, monthly. Um, and um, I'm going to ask you, Mary Beth, to, to elaborate a little bit about that um, their their funding relationship to us. That would sure. be helpful. So, so that we we intersect with them in in a number of ways in terms of the funding source. Um, the position that they actually fund is our dining site manager. So Highland Valley, if you think of it, they are what's called an ASAP. Every uh, geographic location, primarily by county, has an ASAP, and it's like an area senior provider. And um, the designated one for our county and area is Highland Valley Elder Services. So if you were to go over to Franklin County, that would be Life Path. If you go over to Springfield, it's Greater Springfield Services. Highland Valley Elder Services covers 23 communities in Hampshire County. And what they do is um, you know, a variety of things from elder services to protective services to um, Meals on Wheels. So we intersect with them if we get calls around um, neglect or self-neglect or abuse, uh, financial mismanagement, or someone who's being exploited. They have an investigative unit that investigates and are, is charged by statute to provide those services. They also provide primarily uh, where our, our, our residents are impacted. Um, they do the Meals on Wheels and also the congregate dining. So through my contract with them, and, I, and I've just begun some negotiations for next year for that contract, um, they fund our dining site manager. So the position that Donna Hancock holds in terms of um, overseeing all of our meals, whether it be the congregate or the home delivered meals is funded through them. They also provide all of those meals. Um, and they also determine who gets those meals, which is a very important strategic decision by them. Um, and they have their own objective criteria, which they apply, which we have, uh, we frequently have a, a disagreement about whether someone is tr truly homebound or not. Um, and then the other, the piece that they also provide is um, if uh, an elder needs support in their home, they are the designated agency that comes in and does a holistic review of all services. So we, are you eligible? Do you need um, home delivered meals? Do you need someone to come in and assist you and clean once a week? Do you need um, some home health aid assistance? So maybe someone maybe once or twice a week to come and change a bandage or something around that nature. So they are the provider of services which facilitate our residents to be able to age in place, which is for me a very critical support system, particularly in light of the pandemic, where aging in place takes on greater importance. We want to keep people in home, what we learned right with the, the pandemic. The more we can keep people home and safe and supported with services that are robust and rich and accessible, the safer their health is as opposed to having to go to a hospital or another type of, of more uh, congregate setting. So. Um, we have not, uh, they contacted me vis-a-vis -vis that letter. I spoke with the, the director, Ellen Wimet, and I also spoke with the chairperson, Ellen Estelle Staz, who um, she works for an attorney um, in Northampton. And um, she urged me that we should have a representative from our community. 
both in terms of listening to the information and also overseeing what those programs are. The, uh, the other last point of contact that I neglected to mention is they also provide us with grants. So things like uh, our caregiver support group is supported by a grant through them. Um, um, our grief and loss support group is supported by them. Um, we received money to do a Latinx support group through them. So they serve as a pass-through agency for a number of federal programs and also some state funds with regard to support services for seniors. Um, and so I think my own position is that it is helpful for us to have someone who um, enjoys um, critically thinking and listening to their services and providing and, and advocating for our community. For people who are new to the board um, right now, it, um, we had a conversation in the fall, Rosemary and I, it came to our attention that um, our seniors actually are anomalous and our community was anomalous and we were not receiving um, services in a timely manner with regard to home health aid or home care. So other communities, if you lived in Northampton or perhaps Chicopee, if you came home from the hospital and you needed assistance, they would be there within 24 hours and you would get somebody assigned within several days. Here in Amherst, you can wait up to six months. So zip code was determining um, access to services. And so, um, you know, we, we did a significant amount of, of advocacy. Rosemary invited the person from Highland Valley to come and we did a presentation, et cetera, and, and that's being addressed. But I, it, that's, that's the sort of um, representation that, that we are looking for with Highland Valley is they are a critical support for our community of seniors. And it, it can be challenging um, to make sure that we get our due regard because we are one of 23 communities. So if, if that piques anybody's interest and they say, I really like to, to be an advocate and listen critically and ask questions um, and serve in that capacity. Uh, the meetings are once a month. They are virtual at this point in time, uh, is my understanding through Estelle. Um, and if people are interested, I can also arrange a conversation with Estelle as the, the chair, if you just kind of want to suss it out and determine whether it would be an opportunity you would like. But I, I think it's a, an important um, relationship that I also seek to cultivate in my position. I'd like to uh, add um, uh, something. Um, it comes to my mind, I think about um, John Lewis and, and the notion of uh, good trouble, <laughs> making good trouble. Um, I think we need to have uh, representation on that board, which is both diplomatic, fact-focused, but also willing to ask some you know, questions and, and actually maybe nurture uh, an imagination for um, getting at some core issues. Um, for example, we don't want seniors to have to choose in our community or any community to have to choose between healthcare and getting meals. Uh, th that's not an acceptable choice. And so we want and expect Hi, uh, Highland Valley uh, to be attentive to uh, it advocacy regionally. Uh, if the if if we're we we don't want it, you know, we need to make the pie bigger. <laughs> uh, if 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 that's you know we're starting to see that, and um, so um, so specifically, what I would welcome is a member, one, one of you, to consider taking this on um, and carving out this um, um, being Amherst representative. Do we have anyone who's prepared to volunteer? Can, can I just interrupt for one moment? Because yeah. uh, Norma just dialed in. So oh, wonderful. I, so um, Norma, I am going to click allowed to talk. Hi, Norma. 
and she is she has muted herself so i've sent her a message to unmute okay <laughs> okay can you hear me now here we yes. go yes yes <laughs> Okay. Just in time, Norma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, it keeps fading out. But anyway, um, yeah, I've worked with Highland Valley for three years now. But um, it's been mainly on the nutrition committee. And, you know, I do go to their board meetings, which are the first Monday of the month from two to four. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, they're, they do cover a, a wide area, but, you know, they have never mentioned, um, and it was mentioned in when we had, I forgot who came um, to the council meeting and talked about the services and that people had a problem parking and uh, so they didn't want to do home care in Amherst. Um, that was part of it. Um, but... I guess I didn't realize that Highland Valley, um, you know, was, you know, sort of responsible for this too. And, and I never heard that mentioned that that was a problem in, in the board meetings. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Norma, the good news is that um, Norma has just over, over the three years that she's participated with HIVES, which is the acronym for Highland Valley Elder Services, um, has, has developed connections and she's, she's welcome to participate as Leverett's representative if, if she chooses to do that. Um, uh, so she is a kind of a, a, a person, um, I think um, that, um, who knows the territory, so to speak. So she could certainly brief, brief a newcomer. So I would say, um, think about it. <laughs> and uh, we have until um, the end of September, I believe. Uh, Hives has a training session. Um, and I think, uh, um, and thanks Norma for mentioning the uh, schedule, the meeting schedule. Meetings to Hive's uh, location is in Florence, isn't that right? Um, yes. Is that, yes. Uh, yeah, where the board meetings are and held. They, they do reimburse um, representatives for travel. So if anybody travels to Northampton, you know, should they ever resume in-person meetings, um, you know, that, that that would be a piece of it. And I just I just wanted to I also want to clarify. So First of all, that that I am I really don't want to see Norma disappear from this process and reporting and sharing with us because she has that sort of institutional wisdom about um, Highland Valley, how they proceed. She has the relationships and certainly can be a resource. I think that what happened is what came to light is their bylaws, Highland Valley's bylaws, require. Um, uh, a representative from every community and that who resides in the community. So they contacted me to say, um, though, because I said, we already have our representative. And they said, well, you, you have to have somebody from Amherst. So it doesn't, it doesn't prohibit Norma from being our emissary and participating and also working with somebody in terms of advocating, but the, the seat that she has to sort of like occupy to get there is through through you know a representation of of, a, of the community, but it doesn't mean Norma that I just want to be really clear for the record that that we are not replacing yeah. in addition, yeah. um, and and we hope we hope so much that you will continue because you know that the whole healthcare system here, you know what we provide and do. So I just want to say thank you and and that uh, it's a, one of those again bylaw pieces that they've just brought to attention. So. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, Leverett is not one of the towns that Highland Valley serves. No. So, <laughs> I <see that>. oh, <laughs> gosh. so I have not done much with Leverett because they don't do a lot with, you know, with seniors. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I tried to volunteer when we first moved here. And, um, you know, they said, oh, they 
inspected septic systems and you know there was not much to do with public health otherwise so uh, well let's have a conversation offline and figure out our way in with Estelle let's do it we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll no I understand they've made me a director at large which is no. what you have um, instead no. of a representative so. great thanks Sue so, okay. does it have to be uh, the representative does it have to be a person on the council or can it just be oh it does okay okay all right we'll give it some thought folks and um we'll uh we'll we'll make it happen by hook or crook um so um let's see moving on um uh i'll be brief on this um we uh um Three of us have maybe more, who knows? Oh, Rosemary, go ahead. I mean, uh, yeah, Rosemary. I just wanted to thank Norma for coming on. Oh. She had not had the right code and I gave her a call, so oh. she was able to get on. So Excellent. thank you, Norma. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, I was frustrated. She persisted. <laughs> <laughs> I was you. right by the computer, but. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. Um, so um, Rosemary um, and Mary Beth and myself on different occasions individually have for a variety of reasons visited the, uh, the town of Hadley Senior Center and uh, the new one that uh, it's not even really open um, and gosh um, um, and I'm sorry that Greg couldn't join us but wow Greg. <laughs> You have to get yourself there. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Um, but um, um, at any rate, um, it was an extraordinary experience. And I'll be sending, I've written up a report uh, about what I uh, observed and conversations that I had. Um, and um, I'll send that sometime in the, in the weeks ahead. Do take a, a close look at it um and um because it is a vision uh that um we need to discuss and look at and um so um rosemary uh, your 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 visit there was a little different than mine um you want to do you, do you want to just give us a little teasing uh description well, I when I first walked in, Dick actually went there for foot care, and I thought, oh, I'm going to tag along and see if they'll let me come in with him, which they did. There was no one else in the building. There was a volunteer at the desk, but when you first walk in, the desk is very large at a low level, which is very accessible for everyone. The receptionist was there, the volunteer receptionist, and Jane, I've uh, forgotten her last name, was behind in, in the office. And the first impression is this huge ceiling with total amount of light and large windows. It's a very warm kind of a feeling because there's a big fireplace and it's a large room, but it still feels like a comfortable room. Mm -hmm. And that was on the left and to the right was the dining area. And behind that with the counter is their wonderful kitchen, which is of course a kitchen built to code. And it just, <laughs> it's not huge, but it's perfect. And then in the back is a, um, a, a nice big classroom with tables around and there's an exercise room with mirrors, the entire wall of the exercise room. There is a nurse's room or a, a healthcare room, a very good space for where Dick was getting his foot care. And uh, it just was, I didn't get look in closets or anything like that because I didn't feel it was appropriate for me to be snooping or asking for a tour. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a sheer delight to be there. There was an exercise room with equipment as well, mm -hmm. with exercise. Yes. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, yeah, Mary Beth, I would, can I, maybe you have this information, but it'd be curious for me to compare our senior population versus the surrounding towns. Being a new member of the, of the committee, I'm, and I'm always interested in data, like uh, does Hadley have a significantly larger percentage population of seniors than us, and thus they can advocate for a much larger senior center? I know, know down here on the Cape, the next town over from where I'm sitting now in Harwich, talk about a senior center. It's huge and it's on a campus right across from their high school and it's just mm -hmm. like spacious, spacious, spacious. Mm -hmm. And of course, those full-time residents, a great proportion are seniors. But I'd just be curious in terms mm -hmm. of how many seniors we have in Amherst versus the general population and then taking out the students, how many we have, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I don't know those facts. And I think for us as a committee, that would be very interesting. Do we have X number of seniors? Into, and by the way, how do you define senior? What's the age category for a senior? Yeah. Well, it's usually, it's, yeah, it's usually in terms of demographics, it's usually age 60 on up, just in terms 60? of. Okay. 60, That's yes. Right. And I can definitely get you that because I, I have all of that inform, that population. I, yeah, because yeah. maybe some of the others on the committee know that type of thing, but just to give it a, a put things in perspective. I think us knowing those kinds of things would be very helpful. Yeah, I will forward that for, to Pat. Yeah, He'll that's distribute great. it. Yeah. Yes, I want to just um, um, add that um, I in included some of that data just that was interesting to me, Tim, uh, comparing uh, Amherst, some demographic information comparing Hadley um, um, and, uh, and Amherst population-wise, uh, um, property taxes um, and uh, just a variety of information that I thought was uh, important to compare. Um, and I, I want to also say, uh, as I, I'm learning that um, from, uh, the, about the legendary Jack Wollensack, uh, <laughs> who has done some Absolutely, and I, I'm, I, do, I haven't even seen your slideshow yet, um, Jack, but Jack has shown amazing leadership in uh, uh, several years ago in uh, leading, scooping up others, and visiting uh, various senior centers around the area. Um, I will also say that, um, that we have our our group has been invited our council on aging has been invited by um, their executive director and their council on the aging which is jane nevin smith to come and have a meeting there in their big room and of course i'm sure that would involve a tour so that we would all be on the same page but i want to say that I was blown away by what I saw, the, arch the accessibility, the thought that went in by the designers, um, the imagination, um, and also at the, at the root of what that made all that happen and what Jane, Nevin Smith and others are responsible for is the political power and the community-based organizing that the seniors did in order to, in Hadley, to make that happen. That just doesn't fall in your lap because you want it and you think it would be nice to have um, a senior center that meets your needs and, and uh, of now and in the future. But it was quite the campaign. And, it, it, and yet, I was convinced that it's the kind of thing that's possible if if, if wanted. And I want to ask Jack just to say, to say a few words, to s just comment about what inspired you to, um, to do this tour and gather information because some, because it sounds to me like a whole lot of legwork has been done. Uh, <clears throat> yes, we've, uh, my, the committee and I, subcommittee and I, have visited somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 newer uh, senior centers in Massachusetts, mostly around this area. 
we have spoken to the directors of most of those um, uh, senior centers to get an idea of where the funding came from, how long the, the process of planning and building the senior center took, um, the, the population, senior population. So we have a lot of data and it's been presented to um, the senior center, the Amherst Senior Center and uh, the Amherst um, uh, Town Hall several times. And uh, I plan to run over to uh, Hadley to see the new senior center for myself. And if possible, spend a few minutes talking to the director because there's, there's a lot of information that uh, we can gather uh, by talking to the people who were involved with the, uh, the development of all these new senior centers. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's my plan. And uh, when I'm over in that direction, I'll stop at the new building and, uh, and uh, take a look at it. That's wonderful. And Greg, um, uh, y y when, when you and I talked a little bit and you mentioned that one of your reasons for joining the council, joining us on the council was that you, you were curious about why things got stalled uh, with respect to Amherst Senior Center. Am I correct in that recollection? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I believe so. And we, talk, we talked uh, also earlier about uh, Hold on. the population data. Um, we have gone all through that and correlated the square footage of the senior centers with the senior population and the, the cost of the building and so on. So a lot of that, the information is now a year or two old, but yeah. uh, I think it's still valid. Sure. Greg? Yes. Yeah. D did you want to say a little bit more? I, we uh... Uh, No, I, I'm still, you know, getting, uh, getting more information, but I'm glad to see or hear how much uh, work uh, John has done, Jack. And I look forward to talking with him uh, in, in more, and everybody else in more detail. Yeah, sure. Uh, That's good. That's good. We want mm -hmm. each other to talk to each other. <laughs> because <laughs> the two of you, maybe you could engineer, <laughs> figure you could, um, Let's see, you can, uh, you can still, if you drive in separate cars, you could, you could meet, you know, it, yeah. it, it helps Jane. Uh, Jane loves to show, show off that center. And she's got reason to be proud, I'll tell you. Um, so I guess one of the things though, uh, as a practical matter that I want, I want to ask you about is whether, um, it it would be it would be possible uh, for us to hold a socially distanced but and masked meeting in that big dining room that which they would offer to us as a boardroom uh, so that we we could uh, if we want to schedule that I was reluctant to I wanted to consult with everyone and Mary Beth as well to make sure that that people would feel comfortable. Not everybody would, but um, I mean, we could still manage probably uh, the zoom zooming in. Uh, some could participate electronically, uh, but I just wanted to kind of informally poll you and see. Um, and uh, Rosemary, what are your thoughts? I would like to know a bit about their ventilation system before I agreed to do that. Okay, sure. And by the way, I meant to mention that the, the senior center is only about 10,000 square feet or maybe a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's a smaller population in, in Hadley. But the cost was only a little over $7 million, which, mm -hmm. which is pretty minimal when you start thinking about what the library wants. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's also I wanted to just add that it's extraordinary that it that it includes all kinds of amazing state of the art 
um, equipment for recording, for um, like the huge movie screen, for um, um, sinks in the in the room for uh, the uh, the creatives room. Um, there's um, uh, wide doorways. There's you know everything is ADA compliant. Uh, for people with disabilities. There's audio systems for people with uh, difficulty hearing. Um, there, in other words, a lot of uh, barriers. It, it's intelligent design uh, of uh, architecturally. So uh, I'm sure that uh, um, uh, Jack and others may have seen other examples of it, but it does take your breath away. And, um, and it started with a large community meeting and, and uh, some flexing of uh, seniors' political power. And uh, I'm not afraid to use that word, political power, um, and grassroots organizing. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of what it takes, actually. And so um, at any rate, um, we'll, we'll, uh, to be continued. Um, but uh, anybody else have any any questions or concerns um, or reservations about meeting uh, there if we were to do that? Yeah, uh, Sue. Yeah, I, I would rather wait till we're over this COVID business. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Okay. All right, so so if that were the case, would you, would you personally, would, would you be okay? You would, could still participate electronically. Would you be, you would be fine with that? Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll figure this out because we want, we don't want to put any, any pressure on anyone uh, to, you know, um, to, to, uh, do something that they feel might impair their health. We all have different situations and different exposures. So um, that's perfectly reasonable and understandable. Um, okay, so, um, and polling place, uh, I put item polling place consol consolidation on, uh, that's kind of become moot uh, because uh, decisions have already been made. Um, I will note that that, uh, merely that that's a good example of the impact of, of people speaking up and speaking out uh, because those town councilors heard the voice of the people on this one and decided to uh, pr pr preserve as best they could the option of uh, polling places, uh, 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 maintaining most of the polling places. So. And um, uh, Rosemary, did you want to add? I didn't know if everybody was familiar with the history of what went be on behind that, or if you know what is going on with the polling places. But I just wanted to state a few facts. Historically, there are 10 precincts in Amherst with eight neighborhood polling places. There are 17,092 registered voters in Amherst. And in the 2016 election, 4,668 people voted in the primary election and 15,096 people voted in the November election. This year, the town clerk has received so far about 5,000 applications for mail-in voting mm -hmm. to get a ballot. That means that approximately 10,000 voters could turn up at the polls in November, minus those who choose to vote early, and we don't know how many will do that. So in July, when Shavina Martin, the town clerk, proposed a plan to have only one polling in place in Amherst for the fall elections, to be at the high school using two gyms, it was approved by the Secretary of State office and it was approved by the Amherst Public Health Nurse. So on October, August 3rd, the town council met to discuss that plan and take a vote. They actually deliberated for three hours and um, several of the counselors had serious concerns about consolidating all the polling sites. Um, 
Plus, there were about 15 calls from the public who were very strongly opposed to one polling site, including a League of Women Voters representative and John Boniface, who's a constitutional voting rights lawyer. They were strongly opposed. Also, the CDC recommends more sites rather than fewer during this COVID pandemic. And Governor Baker has reduced the size of outdoor gatherings to be between 50 and 100. So having one polling site was going to be a big problem. And the greatest concern were fear of long lines. And that would be difficult for elders and people with disability waiting in a long line. Difficulty for people with small children Difficulty for hourly workers who had limited time to be waiting at the polls. It would also mean voter suppression because many people do not trust mail-in voting and especially members of the minority groups, minority groups historically have not wanted to vote by mail. And a lot of people were concerned about voters not certain where to go and they just may not bother. And then of course there's the need to travel. Some people would have, who don't have cars, would have to get to the polls. Some people would have to drive as far as four miles to get to the polls. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a problem. And COVID of course, having only one polling site meant that there would be large numbers of people exposed to one another and contact tracing would be a problem. So the council voted that night on August 3rd because they felt they were under pressure. They were told they had only 20 days before the primary election on September 1st to make a decision. So they were forced, uh, and no one seemed to know if that was 20 business days or 20 calendar days, but they believed it was 20 business or business days. So they voted and seven counselors voted in favor of one polling site and six were strongly opposed. The alternative plan would have been to keep the polling sites that can still be used and use the high school only for the, those that had to be closed for COVID. And that was the North Fire Station and two precincts at Bangs. But the day after the vote was taken, <laughs> Um, they learned that it was 20 calendar days, so they would have until August 12th to make their decision. Mm -hmm. So the council met again on August 10th, and they met to reconsider the vote taken on August 3rd. And as Pat suggested, President Lynn Griesmeer opened the topic of election day polling places by saying, we heard you. And she meant she, they really heard the public and really heard the objections. And after a two hour discussion, they voted again and unanimously approved the historical polling places for precinct one, three, five, six, seven, and eight and nine. They would remain the same as they always had been and only precincts two, four, and 10 would be moved to the high school. The North Fire Station could not be used for Precinct 2 because of the risk of COVID to the essential responders. And uh, Precinct 4 and 10 could not, banks couldn't accommodate three precincts. So um, they would be moved to the high school also. So Paul Shavina and Jeremiah from the facilities maintenance carefully toured each of the sites and created a very well laid out plan for each site. Um, there would be six feet of social distancing space and there would be a separate entrance and exit at each site. So as it stands, and the, the council voted unanimously to approve that plan. So Precinct 1 will be at the church in North Amherst, the Korean church in North Amherst. 
Precinct two will be at the high school. Precinct three will be at Emanuel Lutheran Church. Precinct four will be at the high school. Precinct five will be at Bangs. Precinct six will be at Fort River. Precinct seven will be at Crocker Farm. Precinct eight will be at Munson Library. Precinct nine will be at Wildwood. Precinct 10 will be at the high school. Each one of those, all but one of those sites will allow for six foot distance at the site and separate entrance and exit door. The only um, site that could not have separate en uh, entrances was um, the Munson Library, but they have, they will have traffic monitors so that people do not have to enter, enter and exit at the same time. They will wait until they have passed one another before they can go in. So it's all set. And I think the really thing that we have to be concerned about now is we have to encourage early voting at Bangs so people do not have to go to the polls at the last day. We have to encourage voting by mail. There will be a drop a ballot box at town hall for people who are afraid of putting their ballot in the mail that it may not get there. And we're hoping there will also be a, a ballot box in North and South Amherst, but it has to be under um, camera surveillance. For now, it's going to definitely be at the, scene, at the uh, town hall. We have to be sure there's very good publicity about the sites and the changes that are necessary. And we have to remind people of safety guidelines for the COVID when they do vote. But early voting is, is pretty important and that's gonna be held about a week in advance of the final voting date. Thank you so much. Um, I want to just remind everybody to mute themselves if they're not speaking so that they don't get additional um, um, sounds. Um, and um, so, and thank you, Rosemary, for that thorough uh, explanation and, and uh, fact focused uh, conversation. Tim. Uh, just a little update uh, to your report, Rosemary, which was great, and uh, I hadn't followed it as carefully down here on Cape Cod. <laughs> but I was just called this morning by the uh, town clerk, because uh, I am an election warden. I'm a warden in Precinct 9, which is Wildwood School. And uh, they asked me to do a full shift rather than a half a shift because they're having problems with staffing, no surprise. But I asked about the safety precaution. It's going to be like you go into the supermarket. There's going to be plexiglass, uh, all the proper protective equipment. Uh, people will be wiping down the pens, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, yeah, it's going to be very different, but uh, very I, I feel very comfortable with the planning that's uh, being taken place uh, with the whole process. Yeah, good. And the polls will, I guess, stopping the polls will be a problem, but there are going to be also traffic people involved. And um, the town manager has said that he is going to repurpose some of the town staff to help manage these um, polling places. Oh, so great, because be there are going to be limits on terms of the numbers of people that can enter to minimize yeah. lines, et cetera, et cetera. So be good. That's right. Yeah. So, so I'm really encouraged, and I find it very encouraging to know that the people's voices were heard, that the constituents were heard. We had a District 5 meeting about this prior to the town council meeting. And people spoke very strongly about not having a consolidated voting place with everybody at the high school. And our two um, town councilors really spoke for us. And I, I think it's good that grassroots efforts work. <laughs> All right, that's great. And, and um, I wanna um, 
just uh, I do have some concerns about the publication, uh, like how to, uh, again, get the word out uh, specifically to seniors. I have concerns about the, the delays in the newsletter, but I don't know what else can be done except to encourage people to connect to the website and the other vehicles of information. And I'm sure that, you know, <laughs> Uh, we have to read our daily newspaper uh, too uh, um, because there's a lot of uh, detail in it and um, to, in a situation that uh, was changing very rapidly. So uh, uh, I appreciate uh, Rosemary's distilled uh, summary of what uh, of a lot of things that happened over the course of a few days. Um, I also wonder if um, maybe lawn signs about early voting would be something that we could look into or the town could look into. I don't know if there's any legal issues around that, but I always put up a sign from the League of Women Voters saying vote at counts. So I can't imagine why that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. Yes. Well, I can, I can serve as a... I could serve as a conduit with the town clerk and find out how we might play a robust role, you know, even from home or socially distanced. I know that I have been posting, I already received my early ballot. And so I posted it on Facebook and said to you know, all my friends, vote, make sure you vote, you can request it. And I just want to clarify that the in-person early voting, if people want to come in person, will be at Bang Center. It's on the website and it's August 22nd through the 28th. And so I'm sure that the town will be coming out with a lot of media around that, uh, which will, it includes a weekend. So the August 22nd is a Saturday. So people will be staffing the bank center on the Saturday and Sunday. It will be available. Um, so it'll be a full seven days. And I, um, I will definitely liaise with them and I'll get back to Pat who can distribute information about how we could help out more um, to engage voter activity. Okay, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, now, um, I'd like we need to move on to our action items, and you should all have received a copy of the mission statement. We'll take a look at that, and I have one friendly amendment. Actually, thank you to to Sue's uh, great editing editing skills uh, to the uh, mission statement on um, our, our or. Uh, it's a small edit to the mission statement, and it's just mer merely in the third paragraph, um, the first sentence, um, I would just, I would replace the words in ways that, and simply insert the word to. So the sentence would read, we explore ways to co-create new programming or adapt existing programming to better serve seniors evolving needs, et cetera. That's how it will read. Uh, so clean, neat, tidy. Um, uh, does anyone object to that uh, little bitty edit? Okay. Would you send that out to everybody? I could, I could certainly do that again, sure. Yeah. You sh you if you send it as a, a Microsoft Word document, I can make changes. Well, no, I don't need to, that's fine. Okay. Okay. It'll be captured. I think we could capture it in the. It'll be captured in the min minutes. The proposed change. Okay. So. Also, uh, I have not heard back from Paul Bachelman as to whether or not we need to do anything further regarding this statement. So yeah. I don't think we can. I don't know if we can vote on it. Well, okay. in in any in any event, I mean, we are an independent body, I believe. We're, we're appointed by the town manager, but we are an independent body, which is advisory only. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, could you say, is there a reason that we would have to even ask permission to vote, to, to uh, form, formulate our, uh, basically to articulate more, more clearly I don't, I don't, what our mission is. I don't, I don't think that I'm just, I'm speaking as Pat Rector, I'm a council member, not so much as chair, but I don't, I don't, what we constructed, I think brings our intentions up to the moder to, you know, 2020. And I don't think it 
fundamentally conflicts with the, the spirit of our earlier mission statements. That would be my position if I was talking with, with Paul. <laughs> well, we never had an earlier mission statement, so. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. But, and I just thought it would be appropriate to run it by him, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we don't. Need it's it. fine. I, I, um, I'd say let, we can share it with the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's fine. Um, so, uh, would you, uh, do, shall we, t it's, I don't have any skin on the game on this, so we, we, we don't have to vote on it today if we're not already. Uh, Tim? Uh, I would propose and I'll move for the committee that we adopt the uh, mission statement subject to review by the town manager and uh, go from there. That's maybe the easiest way to do it. I don't know if there's something that we have to do uh, either legally or in terms of consistency within the town. I think, Rosemary, that's a good point to run it by Paul. But I think if we could approve it today and uh, subject to his review, and if he spots something uh, that's inconsistent with the way these things are done throughout the rest of the groups in town, I think that would be helpful. But that, that is a possible solution. I see a lot of heads nodding. Is our is our folks is is are is, are we agreed that uh, to Tim's suggestion? Do you want to make that that so? Is that a, a all right? A we'll all formally move that we approve the uh, amended uh, mission statement as amended today with the wording change, uh, subject to review by the town manager. Second. All in favor. Okay, and uh, Yvette, what's your vote on this? Yoo-hoo. Okay, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six, six votes. I agree, of course. Oh, oh okay, seven. Thank you. All righty, okay. All right, good. Um, thank you for that. Um, and then uh, the motion statement to college students in the town of Amherst. Um, uh, you have that in front of you, and uh, I did have um, so, and I'm uh, so we would need a motion uh, in support of that. I mean, uh, um, yes, we need to bring it to the group. Uh, Rosemary. I did not get a, a copy of the corrected letter, which Tim made a very good suggestion for the final sentence in that letter, and I did not get a corrected copy of that. So do okay. you want to read the final, um, the final statement? I can't, um, the final paragraph before we vote on it so that we're sure we're on the same page. Yes, uh, hold on, because I'm, I'm looking at multiple copies of this. You had read, uh, written, we believe that the vast majority of students will rise to high expectations regarding their social conduct, blah, blah, right. blah, blah. Yeah. And Tom, and uh, it, Tim made a very good recommendation. Yes, um, I, and I completely uh, am, embrace that and in fact let me let me pull up on my own screen here uh the, i made those revisions i thought those who weighed in on those uh, revisions were absolutely right on target uh let me pull this up um okay here we go um so here's what i would have uh we believe that the vast majority of students will conscientiously respect public health concerns related to this coronavirus. Please partner with the vast majority of Amherst residents in exercising strong social discipline that supports, that supports everyone's well-being. So that integrated Tim's statement. And I think... Uh,
Yeah, I think that's... That's not what you sent out to us. No, it's not. It's, it sounds different to me. Um, Tim, do you, have a, do you have a copy of what you wrote? Okay, we can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you, Tim. Unmute, unmute sorry, yourself. Sorry, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a computer down here. I mean, a uh, printer, so I wasn't able to print out things. And secondly, uh, now I'm in Zoom, and the last time I tried to switch to uh, a way I could read it electronically, I totally screwed things up, and I don't know how to do that. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. so I can't read it. Um, so I, and by the way, I have not seen any final, uh, Pat, I didn't see any final revision of the letter. I just sent my comments okay. and you felt they were good comments and that's all I've heard. So oh, I have I'm sorry. Um, that's no, my bad. Final copy of, yeah. the, of, the, of the letter. Okay. Uh, so, um, so why don't, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what we should do uh, with I'm, it. I'm looking for that. Um, I'm searching for his um, email. Let me see if I can find it. While you're searching, does anybody know? I've got a, a, I'm a, I have a PC. I don't have an Apple. And down the bottom, I've got this little toolbar with different icons. I can go back between uh, my Word and my internet, and then there's a little I guess symbol for Zoom. If I switch to another one, can I come back and not lose everybody, or how does that work? Anybody know? Because <laughs> I could look at it if I knew how. I just don't know how. Yeah, and let me let me just acknowledge that um, I I did uh, uh, with all the edits that I I got. I I didn't actually word for word. Uh, uh, incorporate uh, the edits I you know I I revised I got rid of the you know I, I took the spirit of the edit and okay. just tried to make it fit and flow with the other sentences so uh, I, I if I can just add for Tim's inquiry yes Tim if you go to your um, to your icons at the bottom so say you click Microsoft Word right um, I do that just right now, and I haven't lost you. It just one one screen comes in front of the other. Oh, so I see. Don't, don't um, X out of Zoom. You know, don't press in the right. upper left corner the red button or the yellow or green. You can simply bring up um, another application by clicking it on, and then you can X out of that one. So if you I do see. access, if that's clear. Okay, it is. Um, so all I have is the, um, just my email to you, Pat, with my suggestions, and I have not seen the finally, final revised letter. I don't think that that's ever been circulated. Okay. So... What was your suggestion, though? That's, that was my question. Well, my, yeah. My suggestion, basically, in the last paragraph, I recall, uh, the original draft had... A, which I thought was a little bit too parental, if you will. So yeah. I made a suggestion to d delete one sentence and then just merge it into a separate sentence, which had the same spirit, but didn't come across quite as uh, a lecturing or parental yeah. as, as the first text, <laughs> if you will pardon me. <laughs> that no, way, no, you, you were a, right. So how the actual words came out, I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it was perfect. Okay. So, um, well, I mean, um, I could, um, just it's a short, it's a short letter. One option is to maybe you could just read it. Uh, yeah. for everybody. Does that make sense? Okay. I just, do you want me to read what I have? Well, I mean, well, sure. if, yeah, that's fine. if we need so, to, yeah, as a committee give you quote permission to send it out for the committee. Sure. Right. Sure. So, uh, but I'll send it out right after the meeting okay. also, you know, just, uh, so uh, we believe that the vast majority of students will conscientiously respect public health concerns related to this coronavirus. Please partner with the vast majority of Amherst residents in exercising a strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. 
And that last sentence acknowledges the fact that not all the grown-ups <laughs> are completely 100% compliant. Uh, not all, you know, so it's not just, a, it's, it's a community-wide problem. It's, I walk the bike path a lot and I see people without masks, um, mm. you know, so. Does that work for? Um, I guess I um, have a little bit, when we say we believe the vast majority of students, I might say it is our sincere hope that students, without saying vast majority, we just okay. expect all students. Okay. It's our all sincere right. hope that students will, and then the rest of the. Okay. All right. So. Because I don't know. I like Do we that. believe that? We don't. <laughs> I know. It, well, it certainly is our sincere hope. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me so, just. It is uh, our sincere hope. That, that students that, that students will exercise strong social discipline. Yeah. Ooh, and that yeah. incorporates Tim's words. Tim's words. Yes. Okay. Students will exercise strong social discipline. Okay. That supports everyone's well be well being. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Do I have a motion? Uh, oh, go ahead. You want Are me to you read again? The, the partnering with the uh, folks. I I I just deleted that. Oh, oh I think the partnering think is the very part good. Oh, like absolutely. A message of of we're asking them to be to help us. Oh, That's okay. So it is our sincere hope that students will partner with us. That's right. That's okay. a very strong sentence, yeah. Okay, right. that students will, that's good. Okay, I like that. Will partner with us in exercising, okay. Strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you going to keep the, that's the ending, right? Are you going to keep the beginning of the letter, which helps give them a little facts in terms of senior? Yeah. Let me, just read, let me just read the first. On behalf of the Town of Amherst Council on Aging, I am writing to warmly welcome you back to Amherst for the school year ahead. Um, the arrival of students um, is part of the splendid historic identity of this town its vibrancy, energy, and idealism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. And read the final paragraph just once more before we vote on it. Yes. We believe that the vast majority of students. No, we strongly desire. Okay. Are we, we it, is, oh, it is our. We really hope. It is our sincere hope that students will partner with us in exercising strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. Oh, and then the partnering, Pat. It is our sincere hope that students will partner with us in exercising strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. It's a social distancing or social discipline sounds like something else. It could be something else. Well, uh, in, higher in the letter, we talk about, um, we, we, we get, uh, say this summer with remarkable, uh, with remarkable discipline through social distancing, mask wearing and frequent hand washing, Amherst Town residents mm -hmm. have kept COVID-19 infections relatively low so we do mm -hmm. itemize those things and they're going to hear that many many times in their uh, college mm -hmm. environment but we and but we do mention it in our letter too do we thank them in advance like we know they're going to help us oh yeah that's a good point like we sincerely hope 
uh, actually we're counting that we're working together and we thank you. Something like that. I'm okay with that. I've been told by some younger folks that thanking them in advance sounds patronizing. <laughs> Don't know. Well, we could just say thank you, uh, not in advance, but thank you. Or we, we appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate well, your partnering with us. Okay, how about we appreciate your help? Because we've already said partnering in the final mm -hmm. sentence. All right. I'm wondering if that sentence is awkward and if we should read it once more. And yeah. The final sentence? Yes. Right. It is kind of you know, bumpy, but it is our sincere hope that students will partner with us in exercising strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. That sounds good. Maybe we could get rid of that and just say strong social dis discipline supporting everyone's well-being. Yeah. Why don't, can we say uh, thank you for uh, partnering with us to blah, 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 as the Sounds end? Good. And then get rid of it as our sincere hope? Yeah, because what we're saying is we are hoping, we are thanking them uh, and uh, assuming that they will uh, have made that personal decision. All right. Okay. So uh, you want to fly that by me again? Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for partnering with us to okay. blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, 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 hold on. Thank you for partnering with us. With us in exercising strong social discipline that supports everyone's well-being. Right. Okay. And then, okay. Um, and I'm not used to this, so just, I don't, do you want me to sign it by my name alone? Do you, shall we, we, I could, if I, we sign it on behalf of the entire council, I could itemize your names on, um, then it would be, you know, from a lot of us. I think, I think that would be the way to go to okay. uh, list all the members of the council. Okay. I like that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, are we in agreement about that? All right. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, that's good. And yeah, okay. All right. And uh, I have one uh, as a challenge, and perhaps Mary Beth can help with the, us with this, but maybe others as well. Um, and that is, um, I, it's still a mystery to me as to what kind of mechanism uh, needs to be sent. Uh, th there's no student publication at Hampshire, I'm told, currently because of the COVID thing. So um, I, I did hear Rosemary suggest maybe just send, send it to the uh, Office of Student Affairs, I believe. Um, that, and, um, that's the next best best thing. So. My, my personal preference would be to send it directly to student publications. Uh, and the, the same is true with Amherst uh, College uh, news uh, uh, paper. But I don't, with Hampshire's a bit of a riddle to me. So if you have, I'll keep sort of trying to figure that out. But if you have any yes. insights on that, you can help me figure yes, that out. I will, I will inquire of the town manager who is very close uh, to um, Hampshire, and I will get back to you on how maybe there's even multiple places and spaces, um, you know, within these communities. To exactly, share. exactly. And I see two hands, and I don't know who was first, so I haven't heard Sue speak much yet. Um, would Would we send a copy to the newspaper? Yes. Yes. Absolutely, because there's 2,500 uh, off-campus students in, in likely to come into town. So, not that they read necessarily, but it'll it'll we'll pick up some. 
And, and Tim, go ahead. Yeah, my, my comment was going to be, I would send it to the uh, Dean of Students offices at each of the campuses asking, maybe that would be Paul's uh, decision that we could get from Paul too, because they probably are going to be preparing packets for all the incoming students and they, they might be willing to include the letter in the packet, for example. That'd be perfect. You know, uh, I don't know. And by the way, the update, that does, I don't know if everybody knows the update at Amherst College. I just heard from the president uh, yesterday. Uh, Amherst College has voted now what they're going to do, not voted, but they've made a decision to maintain their earlier uh, uh, policies. And that is roughly half of the students are going to come back to campus. Uh, they are not going to totally do social distance. Uh, freshmen and sophomores are going to be on campus. They are going to be um, spread out throughout the campus, all the various aspects. There's going to be requirements they sign, need to sign. Now, Amherst is a very, like 98, 99% of the students stay on campus. So the off-campus issue isn't as much of a problem as at UMass, but okay. Amherst made the decision as opposed to Smith and others who elected to change their policies. Amherst is not going to change the policy. Um, so they're starting to come back next week, by the way. Um, so. so we need to get cracking on this for sure. And um, will, will you, uh, will, will this group give me the authority to exercise some judgments about um, like taking into all these things into consideration? I'm going to try to figure out what, um, um, I, I guess the point is, the principle is to get the message to the students. And so through the, through the Dean of Students, through a student newspaper, through whatever we can, we can do. So um, are we in agreement about that? In other words, I don't know if they, they call it this Amherst, is it sufficient for the uh, this uh, statement to go, if it, if it does, if the dean of students says no, our packets are full, they're already bulging, uh, I can still send it. I'd like to have the authority to, to still send it to the college newspaper if there is one. Oh, I would I would suggest we do that anyway. But I just okay. so we're consistent, if. If Mary Beth is going to be talking to Paul, I think we need one person. And uh, if Pat, you do something and Mary Beth does something, I don't. We need to have one person. Yeah. I don't know who would properly do the legwork in terms of. That, that's fine. We, we can right. figure that out. I can. Uh, simply, I, just, I would provide the contacts to give to Pat, just so you know. Oh, great! I, I can, Perfect. I can retrieve that information and I give it to Pat, Perfect. and, and that then how yep, yep. that. Yep. that works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the past, in the past, uh, you, the dean of students' office has often emailed the whole campus students and you know staff about, say, a recent death of a student. So that's a very quick way, you know, versus stuffing information or a letter in a packet. I'm thinking a lot of things are done via email too. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Is it, is it overkill to strive for both? No, it's our lives. It's their lives too. Yeah, yeah. I like the rapidity of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to get guidance from the proper uh, offices at the various colleges. And okay. That's and once Mary Beth gets yeah. those contacts from Paul, then we can proceed from there and uh, okay. take their guidance in terms of how best to communicate that. Um, I don't know if the town manager is going to it was plan was whether Paul was planning to say something. I don't know, but uh, we, have that coordination would be helpful. I had I spoke with him directly that we were going to do something like this, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. he, he's okay. he's fine. Great. Certainly fine with the concept of it. Um, and he even suggested some possible avenues when I met with him maybe a week and a half ago. Uh, but we didn't, you know, to get into the level of detail that we are uh, uh, having now. So, 
All right. Okay. Did you just take, just for the record, did you take a vote on everybody approving the letter and sending it? I just wanted to. We. Sure. Um, I think you should take a vote. I need. On. Yes, I do too. Thank you. Uh, yes. Let's. Uh, all those in favor of. Uh, I don't. I can't remember who made the motion. I think it was Tim. Was. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll move that we approve uh, the letter as uh, verbally uh, summarized by Pat. Um, and I would say um, subject to receiving a final copy. And if you don't hear from any of us in the next day, we're done. OK. okay. Second that motion. All in favor, signify by raising your hand or speaking up a bit. Aye, aye. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's great. Okay. Thanks everyone for hanging in there with that. <laughs> Can you just verbally state what the what the vote was? You know, you know, okay. The was, vote was seven, seven eight eight in favor. Vote. Okay. I'm a record person, as you can tell. <laughs> seven feet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> seven. Now, I don't. I. I don't think um, Jacqueline is with, in the room at the moment. Okay. Um, I think she's left the meeting is what I mean to say. Um, okay, so secretary's report, uh, the, um, you should have a copy of the minutes. Uh, we'll need a motion uh, to approve those minutes. So moved. Thank okay. you. I uh, second that. Okay. Uh, we a motion to approve has been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye or aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Uh, thank you for that. Um, um, is there anyone from the Friends of Senior of the Amherst Senior Center? present in the room for an update we'll we'll table that let me oh. see no, wait a minute there are attendees oh no it's just it's norma okay so not not anybody from all right any topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair in advance of the meeting i don't uh, none have come to me um announcements does anyone have an announce any announcements for future meetings i do uh, uh, on November 9th, uh, Mary Beth and I are going to be, we have been invited to speak at the Women's Club. Uh, the average age of the, uh, I don't know what the average age, but the, the membership there is from 60 to 90 plus. So it's, it's a group of senior women by and large. Um, and uh, we have this an invitation to the Hadley Senior Center. I, I'll, uh, but it's not, um, we need to get more information about that before we make any, and I'll stay in communication with you about that. Um, and uh, um, I will be meeting with um, uh, the former director of the Hadley Council on Aging uh, is Suzanne Travisano. And she was one of those who was instrumental in, um, I'm sorry. Um, she was instrumental in uh, creating the Hadley Senior Center. She's agreed to speak with us. Um, she's retired now herself, but is willing to tell her story. Um, and um, I could meet with her, uh, but another way to handle it is to invite her to meet with us electronically so that you could all hear about their process. Uh, um, at our next meeting. It may or may not be premature for that, but um, I just wanted to get some feedback from everyone about that. Yeah, my opinion is uh, maybe not the next meeting, but uh, perhaps a little later than that. Because uh, I know I, for one, I'm still in Cape Cod mode and coming <laughs> <laughs> and coming back uh, early September. I think that's a tad too early, and yeah. uh, okay. to have that discussion if that's okay. Uh, sure. 
Yeah, that would be yeah. one suggestion. I mean, it's a good idea to, to do that and for us to visit the center, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I'm not sure the immediacy is, is there. Right. Um, that sounds good. So Octo uh, uh, September, or I'm sorry, not September, October or November, uh, we'll just sort of play that and I'll uh, play with that, those dates and I'll, I'll keep everyone posted about that. And um, do let me know individually if you wish, um, if you think you might want to, if, uh, well, no, we'll, I think it's best if we all hear at the same time. I think that I like that notion of that, if she's willing to do that. Um, also, um, I have wanted to meet with, personally meet with uh, Liz Walsh. I know that many of you, some of you know her, um, of, uh, who is uh, the director of Amherst Neighbors, so that we're uh, both, our work complements each other. Um, and if anyone wants to, we'll probably meet face, face to face at a social distance. But anyway, if you wish to do that or you're interested in, in meeting uh, with her, uh, with me um, together, uh, I'm, I'm up for that. I, you know, uh, so I'm letting you know that and uh, uh, welcoming uh, your participation in that. I don't have a date for that yet. So, um, um, so that, that's what's on the, uh, say, uh, Yvette, what, what was your question? Could it be on Zoom? It could be on Zoom. Absolutely, it could be on Zoom. Would, would that make a difference? Would you prefer that? To meeting in person, you're saying? Yeah, would you, would, are you interested in attending if it's held on Zoom? Yes. Okay, then that does it. That <laughs> Uh, I'll see what I can arrange with her um, and uh, any anyone else um, and Rosemary. I'd be interested in attending and um, we could do it in my yard if there's only four of us. Okay. Yeah. She knows, she knows this area well because her mother-in-law lives here. Well, that sounds good. And it, would that be agreeable with you at social distance in Rosemary's backyard, uh, Yvette? Um, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Details on that would be forthcoming. Um, then I'll see. And I, I, I also have an announcement. Okay. Um, I want to be sure that everybody knows how to access the programs that the wonderful programs that Mary Beth has organized and arranged and for seniors. If you go to the senior center, the town website and scroll all the way down on the senior center entry there are the list of all the programs that you can get by zoom or attend and uh, dick and i attended one yesterday which was excellent with a palliative mm -hmm. care doctor and i was i just wow. where people had, had thank you so much for that and tell your no friends idea. about it. Please tell your friends about it. It's wonderful. Okay. There are so many good programs. So I encourage you to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. All right. Um, next COA meeting. Um, I, I'm proposing um, that we meet on uh, uh, Thursday, September 10 since uh, if that's agreeable. Um, typically our meetings are on the first Thursday of the month, uh, unless we choose otherwise. And uh, so since we're having a mid-August meeting, I think another meeting in two weeks is probably too soon. Uh, is there, is, are there any objections to us meeting on that date, Thursday, September 10th via Zoom? Okay, hearing no objections, uh, uh, then that will be uh, what we'll shoot for. Um, thank you everyone for your presence and your patience. And Tim? 
Yes, uh, something for us not to discuss today, but I just for everybody to think about, it would be my opinion. I really love the enthusiasm we have developed now, and we want to do this, and we want to do that. We want to send letters here, we want to talk to these, we want to do this, we want to visit centers, etc. I'm a bit concerned that the cart is getting out of the, whore, the barn too soon, and that is I think we need to have a, dis a discussion about what are the priorities for the center. We can't do everything. Uh, we shouldn't advocate for everything that comes up like in, in a piecemeal fashion and in a shotgun fashion, in my opinion. We need to be more deliberate and we need to all be on the same page. And if we're going to put advocacy and senior pressure or political pressure, Pat, your phrase, I think we need to do it in a deliberate, con concentrated effort that we all buy into and not sort of jump at the first opportunity because as everyone knows, that's not necessarily the most effective mm -hmm. opportunity to go about it. So I think what we need to do is think about how we proceed in that vein uh, and so on. So that would be just a suggestion and an observation based on our discussion today. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. I see Rosemary nodding her head, uh, head up and down. And uh, yes, hearkening uh, uh, back to John Lewis, uh, he, he, he had the same kinds of concerns uh, when he said, he, he, some of his concerns were, it's not just uh, about marching on the streets or marching in electronically, it's having be having discipline, keeping your eye on the prize and defining what the prize is and, uh, and uh, moving forward uh, with it uh, so, that it so that we're solidifying institutional change and, and, and uh, prioritizing uh, and identifying what matters. And we haven't done that as a group yet. So part of what I'll be, I'm, th I'll, I wanted to think about with all uh, and have us all think together is how to develop a process that that does that. So uh, we so stay tuned. <laughs> and um, thanks for to everyone for being here uh, at the meeting. And uh, we'll need if uh, a motion for adjournment. So move. Thank you, Jack. Second. And, and a second from Rosemary. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Pat. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. bye.